before. You don't get stronger, the enemies do, and you receive a skill point to deal with it. So because the challenge is con <laughs> okay. consistently easy from start to finish, I was basically playing this game on autopilot. And if I wanted a game I could turn my brain off and play, I'd grind RuneScape. But I'd probably keep playing the game if that was a thing. But right now, it just feels like Diablo 4 is insistent on restricting the most fun aspects of its gameplay. At one point, I stopped trying to pick up gold oh, entirely man. if it was two seconds out of my way. And again, be it really explains why this video went viral. This video just gets stronger and stronger, minute by minute. Okay. Hello there. So it appears that Diablo 4 is such a bad game that one YouTuber that made the video, which recently went viral, accumulating over 1.5 million views within 5 days, is worth watching. And I noticed that everyone is reacting to this video. I'm gonna be reacting to this video as well. It's a long one. Again, it's a 40 minute video. So be aware, grab a snack, grab a cup of tea, and uh, let's just go with it. What's up, everybody? This is the Christian man here. <laughs> and today, hey, I'm... Christian. I'm really disappointed, like more so than usual, because Diablo 4 started off so strong. Blizzard hooked me in. I was invested in the story, in the gameplay, but I guess I wasn't a fish worth catching. I'm just a lowly sea bass in Animal Crossing worth only 120 bells. I guess the reason I use this analogy is because I've accepted that I'm no longer the target demographic of Diablo games. I've realized that Blizzard ain't <laughs> making these games for people with my kind of interests. In truth, the tastes of modern gamers has evolved and changed, and Diablo is more profitable than it's ever been. But that doesn't necessarily mean the games are better than they've ever been. And I'll die on that cross. Okay, okay, tell me more. So, yes, you read the title right. I don't like Diablo 4, and I think it's a bad video game. That is my personal opinion. If you enjoy this game, don't let me change your mind, okay? If there's one thing I love... Wait, hold on. It's the side of blood. <laughs> you know, I... Diablo 4, there are I actually think I like this game. I'm not here to police your entertainment. You like what you like, that's fine by me, man. What I'm here yeah. to do is whine, bitch, moan, and complain into the ether like an old man. Like an ancient Harad. I'm betting that he's gonna com he's going to compare Diablo 4 to other games that he played and he experienced while he was growing up. As this is the rat trap. If you're gonna compare a game that's newly out, it's the game that's just starting to build the community and content for the game, the original foundation of the game, and you're comparing to the game to other games that, that was out for ages and is not having such a quality of polishment as Diablo franchises, you're gonna have a bad time. You can't even compare games to other games in general as they've been done by different companies, different different developers. And I'm gonna bet that he's gonna do that. Just that. And it's going to be his his own like brick and border, uh, his foundation for the video. Adram, who can't understand why everyone's forgotten the old ways. I really wanted to like Diablo 4, but mm. the longer I played it, the more I came to despise it. But before we jump into hell, this video is sponsored by Rocket Money, an all-in-one finance platform that helps you lower I don't know. money as it keeps track of I'm spending. Everybody watching this is paying some kind of monthly subscription You're spending by fellas of the mm -hmm. using Rocket Money to man or click the link to get started for free. And now for something completely different. So let's start with the positives. The combat in Diablo 4 is very fluid and fun overall. It feels good to slaughter hordes of demons with lightning bolts. Now, I didn't play much of 3, but between Diablo 1, 2, and 4, this yeah. one might have the best enemy design in the series, or at least the most interesting. In the early game, leveling up is extremely is satisfying. When I saw this big skill tree for the first time, I, I just thought, I can't wait to max this out. And one thing I really do appreciate is that boss fights are more about dodging attacks instead of like the classic brute force. Is my number bigger than that boss's number? You know, <laughs> because it adds a much greater emphasis on skill and strategy. That a lot of true. boss fights in D1 and D2 were battles of attrition that could get pretty tedious. Now, I played as a druid and all the abilities were cool, flashy and felt awesome to use the game certainly mm -hmm. fulfills the power fantasy many are looking for in a diablo title and i appreciate that blizzard tried to return diablo to its gothic horror roots instead of the fucking disney cartoon art style they came up with for diablo 3 so i think with the yeah. core gameplay they've succeeded now before we get into the real shit let's why you haven't gone to the real shit yet 
let's discuss some minor complaints. For one, Diablo 4 is a modern video game. With all the new features that people really love and appreciate <laughs> in modern games. Which means it has to be always online just to shove half-assed MMO mechanics in a game that basically has no social features and virtually no reason for players mm. to interact with each other. It's so easy to create a community. What? It makes Diablo more <laughs> of a social experience. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Always online also means if the servers yeah. get fucked, then so do you. <clears throat> it's like Blizzard literally learned nothing from Diablo 3. You know what? That's nonsense. The, that's nonsense. In Diablo 3, Diablo 2, and World of Warcraft and other games, there's so many queues when you if you want to log on to the game and diablo 4 has addressed this problem and fixed it there was so many betas i think this is very uh, we're in bland point this is not well well made point you can of course read multiple articles about things where people are dissatisfied by the ping due to their unique area and the planet where they are living in and they're having ping of the game or they're being constantly disconnected but overall, Blizzard continuously addresses the problems and fixes the problem. And not only this, but the thing is, if you're not able to log on into the game at the very start of the game, don't you think that builds like a momentum for you and momentum for additional marketing and free marketing throughout all of the player base that could play via the games so that you could have a, even more and more players coming into the game? So this thing, I totally disagree, and I believe that this is a very empty point from the person that <clears throat> really can't compare to the earlier titles. And But speaking about communities and clans, uh, yeah, this is I, I haven't discovered any way so that you could communicate with people. So that with that point, I do agree. But I hope that this is going to be changed. But let's see if he's going to speak any more of those points later on in the video. When I see someone lose their hardcore character after putting hundreds of hours into it and they lose it because of a server issue and not a skill issue, yeah, fuck that noise. That's bullshit. At first, I thought it so, was pretty that's cool a that they core. added a horse into this game until I unlocked the horse. I mean, it's so janky. It takes like 10 seconds to warm up its engine before it starts running. Like, like what the fuck? Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. I believe this is some early gameplay bugs or he's just in low. He's having a ping, most likely. This is this have never happened to me ever. Come on, giddy up, giddy up, you bastard. Okay, there he goes. Okay, now on to the real shit. Diablo 4, for me, contains two crippling, fun ruining flaws. Flaws so important that if changed, I would continue playing the game without question. Number one, the difficulty. Number two, the skills. Let's start with difficulty. So okay. I stopped playing at level 48 after beating the campaign. Now, you can run down to the comments section and tell me what a casual scrub I am, that I need to play on World Tier 3, and how Diablo 4 starts to get fun and challenging after I beat the game and reach level 50. And if you're thinking that, you've just proven my point. Why do I have to dump 30 hours into Diablo 4 simply to unlock a difficulty option that suits my skill and experience? Well, because that's how it's always been, Act Man. Yeah, you're right. The big difference is in Diablo 1 and 2, mm -hmm. the games weren't this easy. And D2 had some extreme difficulty spikes. The base game is so ridiculously easy that by the time I got to that climactic finale in hell, I was bored out of my mind, begging for it to end. After an experience like that, <laughs> wow <clears throat> this guy really didn't like the story i was partially skipping the story but mostly i was like diving into the story and the story is very interesting and you can skip this good story you can uh, kill the monsters you can look into the lore and all of the other things but for me after i have finished the story i felt like i was free to do what i want in the game and I honestly I wanted to unlock new things and explore new things. And for me personally, I played MMO for such a long time. For me, story in any any of the game is is like hamstring. It just locks me in the place when I want to move. I want to skip the story as quickly as possible because for me, story does not define my experience in the game. For me, it's the grind 
the item looting, killing monsters and overall experience when you're killing players or killing monsters. Not the actual story or should story be so compelling that I would want to continuously play the game? No. That's... I don't know. This is nonsense. I, I, don't, I don't agree. There's people who play only for the story. There's people who play for things that happens after the story. I'm the person who plays after the story what happens. So maybe the difficulty part gonna gonna be more compelling because so far <laughs> sorry that why the hell would i keep playing i did end up doing the first capstone dungeon and for whatever reason that was like a light switch it's like oh my god i'm actually dying to boss mechanics and not just cheap gimmicks like hard crowd control that lock me in place for five seconds i'm not exaggerating when i say every single death i had besides this boss was from hard crowd control the game had to stop me from moving in order to kill me this capstone dungeon was like the highlight of my playthrough, likely because I was underleveled for it. So why is this game so easy? In Diablo 4, literally everything scales with your level. The cost yeah. of items and upgrades, strength of enemies, gear. It's funny because every quest has a level recommendation next to it, yet it's always the same as your level. So it's like, <laughs> what's the point? This does provide some positive benefits. It makes it easy mm. to play with friends of higher or lower levels. You don't have to worry about your buddy who's played for 600 hours, one-shotting everything and robbing you of the gameplay experience. Another nice touch is that you don't ever out-level quests, dungeons, or the main story. So you can progress these things in any order you want. However, the drawbacks to the scaling difficulty are so flaky. It's easy to agree or disagree with scaling. I made a video about it. And um, yeah, scaling is something unique. This is something that was added in modern games. I can agree with this guy. I didn't really like scaling as well. Um, this is nothing, not something I'm looking forward to. And yeah, this is just... I don't really honestly care how complex it is to implement such thing. But overall, it's just not fun. For me, it's, it's not fun ignorant and obvious i can't believe more people aren't talking about them you understand what it actually means for the entire game to scale with the player's level in an rpg it means that the challenge stays virtually the same from start to finish why is this a problem well it's gonna take a good long while to explain but if the only available difficulty option is easy as balls then you'll be begging for the sweet release of death. Now, we're going to be comparing Diablo 4 to Diablo 1 and 2 and to <laughs> World of Warcraft a lot. While WoW and D4 are different kinds of games, the core mechanics that make an RPG fun and satisfying yeah. to grind, I feel, are the same. So let's imagine if World of Warcraft was more like Diablo 4. Picture this. You just spent a bunch of time grinding levels, doing dungeons, raids, getting... To get his point straight, I think he's he's making a very good comparison, comparing World of Warcraft to Diablo series, because I I honestly felt a lot of similarities, and level scaling it looks like really copy paste from World of Warcraft. Yeah, where the whole game is aimed for you when you reach max levels, but the problem with Diablo Four, it's very limited things when very limited things what you actually can do in the max level let's see getting the best gear becoming stronger you go back to the starting area and guess what that boar you fought at level two takes just as many hits to kill as when you're level 70. would you feel like a badass in this situation no you'd feel like an asshole like you just got duped into wasting your time playing an rpg that fooled you into thinking you were growing and getting stronger now sure you'd certainly have more abilities at level 70 than two but the point is when you level up in diablo 4 you don't get stronger the enemies do and you receive a skill point to deal with it so because the challenge is <laughs> <laughs> okay. Consistently easy from start to finish. I was basically playing this game on autopilot, and if I wanted a game I could turn my brain off and play, I'd grind RuneScape. But Diablo is an action RPG. I want action. I want something that's fun, exciting, and fraught with danger. And if it's got some spooky, scary moments, that's a huge plus too. This level scaling mechanic is one of the most fucked up things I've ever seen in an RPG. It goes beyond simply making the moment-to-moment -moment combat stale and repetitive. And you might be thinking, well, Ackman, what about Oblivion and Skyrim? Well, that's a lot different because you have some control over the difficulty and the scaling only affects the types of enemies you encounter. So it's a lot different.
To be fair, I think Diablo 4 excels in its enemy design. There's a ton of cool creepy demons like those spider hosts and the walking yeah, ball those stacks that awesome. spawn flies. The Balrogs return, as do the Fallen. Everything fits a theme based on the area it's in, and I like that. Enemies can yeah. spawn in unique ways. They unfreeze in the snowy areas or ambush you when you look. When it comes to design, music, and besides the ma mathematics of the game, it's 10 out of 10. The most beautiful ARPG I have ever played certain chests enemy movesets are flashy and fun to play around scaling fucks with the world and level design much more than you'd expect because every corner of the game is now stuck at the same difficulty level therefore no zone stands out or feels more challenging than the last yeah. there is no sense of progression again what if you took this scaling difficulty and added it to elden ring what if you went to caleb at the start and you didn't get your ass whooped by those giant dogs well, then that place wouldn't be as memorable. The desolate atmosphere and red tinted... Well, actually, there is kind of uh, zones in in Diablo 4 that if you go to the zones at a little bit lower level, monsters are a bit higher. But he is kind of right because when you get to like 60, each and every zone in open world that you are going to enter is going to be at your level or one or two levels higher monsters. And the only difference that you have ability in, uh, in, in controlling what kind of monsters you're going to face would be just accessing the capstone dungeons. I believe that's, that's what it's called. or Just uh, magical dungeons that you can just more or less calculate the levels that you're going to face there. But again, it's also weird that they don't write levels of the monsters on the items as well. Yeah, level scaling is, is horrible horrible that sky would betray the tone of caleb the land of caleb would not have this stigma among souls fans of being a challenging <clears throat> oppressive area of the game and that's what makes it stand out you get what i'm saying when you give players far too much freedom to explore an open world and you don't gatekeep any sections of it then they end up having nothing to look forward to and nothing to go back to it feels like there's no rhyme or reason to what i'm doing in the world of sanctuary and it doesn't matter what order i do it in so it all just feels the same to me is this making any sense or am i just talking out of my diab butthole diab butthole you know how in breath of the wild after leaving Okay, yeah, he's, he's com comparing to other games. Um, I don't know. I played in all of the zones. Yeah, killing monsters is not the most fun that you can get in those zones. However, you can get a lot of fun if you're focusing on just solely experiencing the zone and just killing monsters, listening to wonderful tunes of the game and just exploring dungeons, exploring small cellars, speaking uh, with NPCs that give you different quests based on area and it changes just according to this person, according to Actman, it, it doesn't change the difficulty of the monsters. It's not the best thing and it's, it's actually a big, big horrible thing that I can agree with him, but it's it does feel different the zones do feel different so i can't fully agree with him on his on this point leaving the tutorial you could go straight to ganon's castle i mean you'd stand no chance but that type of freedom is genius because you're given a sense of progression in the world and the different zones you're not supposed to be here yet but the designer still lets you i feel like this is just like basic open world rpg design 101. they dangle a super hard boss or tough enemy in front of you and say come back when you're stronger bitch there's plenty of examples, mm -hmm. the anti-guy in Paper Mario, the skeletons next to Firelink Shrine, or the sword dancer in Tales of Symphonia. That's why going back to Slaughter the Tree Sentinel was so satisfying, because at that point you feel like you've grown stronger and gotten better at the game since he whooped your ass. And it's that feeling of growth and accomplishment that I tend to chase in RPGs. Unfortunately, in my 30 hours of playing Diablo 4, I never once had that feeling. These types of difficulty spikes, they just give me something to look forward to. I need a challenge. I yeah I, I can agree i also yeah it, it's very nice to come across a strong monsters and i'm thinking in my head where if i'm too weak i'm just going to go to earlier zone the previous zone i'm gonna farm so much there that i'm gonna come back to the new zone and i'm just gonna slay the monsters that gives me better loot loot better better chances of getting better items and i did the very same thing in diablo 3 and diablo 2 as well it been multiple MMOs as well, except for World of Warcraft that is 
Having level scaling, same as Diablo 4. Can't beat yet, or a super difficult optional boss thrown in my face. A forbidden area I can't access yet. That's what inspires me to grind and get better gear, to see more of the game, right? If you brought Diablo 4's version of scaled difficulty to other RPGs, you'd see how fucking atrocious it is. Like I said, I did the first capstone dungeon at level 48, so I was two levels below the recommended, and after 30 hours, like, this was the challenge I'm looking for. The boss is well-designed, dying to him made me pissed i felt some tension every time i got close to killing him and was running low on healing potions my point is why did i have to beat the game to start being challenged by it remember how simple diablo 1 was there were 16 levels uh i think this comes down to the casualties the casual players the the player base that want to hop onto the game like one or two hours a week and just don't play the game for i don't know one or two weeks as well again and they will have a extremely low progression but i don't know maybe this is the main focus of blizzard to answer the question i personally i'm not compelled by this i personally i'm not sure why people are playing the games if they have so li little time to spend on the game at all and at this point they can just look up guides and and figure out how to <laughs> how to solve problems i think i can i, I can agree with difficulty again yeah, story was not, not the strongest point in, in Blizzard when it comes to experiencing the monsters, even though the story was, was very compelling, very beautiful, and cinematics were amazing, and everything surrounding story was great. However, fights were not, and that's kind of a bummer, right? Levels, and each one got progressively more difficult and was filled with different and tougher enemies. The soundtrack and visuals would change as you got closer to Diablo's lair and hell itself. This is a very simple way to convey to the player that the challenge was evolving. This doesn't happen in Diablo 4. It doesn't matter when you go to hell. The challenge will be the same. It's like this is a game about fighting the forces of fucking hell slaying demons i'm not the doom slayer i can't be the scariest thing in the game i want it to be challenging i want to run into some big fuck off demon that whoops my ass blizzard likes to remind everyone that diablo 4 was going back to its roots they say darkness has returned well the initial direction was diablo 2. the art direction for diablo 4 is really rooted in this idea of delivering on the fantasy of a dark gothic medieval world and that was kind of the initial art direction of the game in general was darker and grittier and diablo 2 was kind of the end by the way i tried playing a pulverized ruin with one hand and it was easy I, it was successful <laughs> so yeah <clears throat> if you make a, a good good build good enough build um you can just chillax in this game for sure but i believe this is going to be addressed and fixed with the seasons or more along, along the way with the patches. This is just the very beginning of the game. Inspiration. We wanted to bring Diablo 4 artistically more back towards like Diablo 2, the much darker style. Major redesign to make them feel more grim, a little scarier, a little darker. And when writing this next chapter, we really wanted to return to our darker roots. Everything's a little darker, everything's more difficult. The story of Lilith and Inarius is the darkest mm -hmm. story we've ever told. What, what, what? Without the darkest story we've mm -hmm. ever told. You have done well. Now I think you should have your reward. Yeah, now the room burns. Yeah, Diablo 2 was, was crazy dark. The story of Lilith and Denarius is the darkest story we've ever told. The dark tone is at direct odds with the gameplay because you're slaughtering endless hordes of trash mobs like it's nothing. You could compare this idea to Bloodborne or Bioshock or Dead Space, where the gameplay matches the tone of the locations and narrative. You see, the brilliance of Diablo 1's design is there are very few moments where you can let your guard down, even at the start, because even the trash mobs can surround you and kill your ass. 
This made exploration in Diablo 1 very tense and methodical. It was an action mm -hmm. RPG, but it also felt like a survival game. But this whole aspect of surviving the forces of hell started to become more and more irrelevant when they released the second game. The issue with Diablo 1's design is that it doesn't fulfill the power fantasy modern gamers are looking for in a Diablo game. Like yeah. I said, the tastes have changed, and I accept that. Diablo fans nowadays want to kill hordes of demons that fill up the entire screen, and they want to feel like a badass. Yeah, I'm having an idea where um, nowadays people are, well, people who played World of Warcraft, they started playing World of Warcraft Classic, like one death equals character delete. So since there's no more challenge in, in World of Warcraft, players just simply trying to die from any sort of monster or group that attack and they would remove the character and this sort of incentive to play and risk and uh, hardcore-ish mechanic kind of um, builds the community and make the game exciting over and over again and it's it's really challenging here in diablo 4 um you have the ability to choose the difficulty and this option should not exist at all. At all. The problem I have with this is it makes most fights with basic enemies feel totally trivial and pointless. Because they serve no actual threat. Now this doesn't bother mm -hmm. me in normal RPGs where you outlevel enemies. Because of the scaling, that's not a thing. At some point, I realized that fighting random enemies on the way to a quest was that's a waste a of thing. time. Because the quest itself will give me demons to fight, so I might as well skip all combat in the open world entirely. You see, yeah. it's not enough to make a somewhat linear ARPG that progresses in challenge through five different acts. They need to make a Diablo game into some sort of endlessly replayable grind fest in order to maximize player retention and justify a live service business model. Mm -hmm. Diablo 2 was more open, but it was segmented, you know? You couldn't just run to the Act 5 area at the start of the game. If they had to have the open world, I would have suggested make the campaign somewhat linear, and then once players mm -hmm. beat the game, the world opens up. But there would be a lot more to it than that. The point is, when you throw hundreds and thousands of trash mobs at me, it trivializes yeah. the combat and therefore trivializes the threat hell itself poses to the world of Sanctuary. When I did finally get to hell, there, there was a brief moment of excitement. I was like, yeah, this this part looks very beautiful. Oh, fuck yeah. I'm going to start seeing some crazy ass enemies. And then it was the same demons I was fighting at the start of the game. Yeah. Even the unique bosses aren't all that challenging. Take the Astaroth battle. It's built up quite a bit. I mean, you're... I don't know. This one cinematic was great, but the boss itself was boring fighting a hell knight riding a giant five-headed demon dog talk about fucking epic this should be a major checkpoint in the player's skills and this guy should be a total badass instead he's a cakewalk because of scaling yeah. difficulty i made a video a long time ago about the most important thing every video game needs and it's in its challenge if i'm not challenged you know then i don't see a point i don't see a point to playing the game and that's how i feel about diablo 4. I might have been willing to grind to world tier 3 and deal with the game's lack of difficulty up to that point if it weren't for the second crippling flaw, the skills. Now at first I was having a blast with this game and every- Okay, so this is a point number 2. Okay, let's go. time I leveled up, I was super pumped to spend the next 5 minutes looking at the skill tree and carefully considering what I would put my point in. I felt like my playstyle was constantly expanding until I unlocked my ultimate. Once you do that, the game becomes extremely repetitive as your playstyle is set in stone from then on, and you're only investing points in passive bonuses and stat increases. Sure, you can respec and swap out skills, but you're only allowed 5 abilities and a basic attack. Once you max these abilities out, you can only move laterally, not vertically. You can't expand your playstyle or your arsenal of tools, you can only swap things out. Does that make sense? Yes, this limitation does create trade-offs and forces players to th think carefully about what to invest in. No, 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 I, I disagree with this. This is one of the things where um, where Diablo has a built to shine. This happened same with Diablo 3, and this was the option that people moved away from Diablo 2. Even though everyone likes to be uh, selective about points and everyone likes to be um, really judged by their own decisions, at the end of the day, people want to play safe and people want to have their decisions matter. And if they make a bad decision, they want to revert it. Diablo 3 had no cost to refunding your skill points or making your decisions, well, different each and every now 
uh, when you decide to change it or decide to play it differently. Diablo 4, on the other hand, uh, allows you to un unspec your skill points, reset your skill tree with minimal cost that just uh, increases and decreases as level go goes by and as, uh, um, as, as you have more and more stats spent, your cost of uh, stats uh, reskilling, res res respecting is going to be higher. And this is perfectly fine. The thing is, skills is tied with items and items cannot work alone without the skills. And it's kind of combo of both. It's normal and it's designed in the way that I noticed. You can't solely rely on your skills because you need to rely on the items that you find. So we need to combine skills with items that you find. So it's, it's expected and welcome that you unspec while playing the game and spec to the items that you find so that you could make your character stronger so it stronger so that you could uh, compete with the monsters that are in scaling difficulty the problem with this is it's made to compete with well basically the path of exile who has a huge skill tree and there's the barrier in order for you so you could play path of exile video game that has a huge skill tree you need to have like a very deep knowledge of the game and deep knowledge of the game systems. And in Diablo games, you don't have to have that. In Diablo 3, you don't have to have, the, have that and Diablo 4 as well. But this is this doesn't happen in Diablo 2, where in order for you so you could succeed, you need to have deep knowledge of the game mechanics and stats and how things work in the game. So I'm not sure how this point going to unravel and how it will be set, but so far... I know where this guy is going and then what type of play style they want but i remember diablo 2 doing this exact same thing and letting you have eight abilities and a basic attack and shit two weapons you could swap uh it's because of the console and cross-platform availability for each and every player to play the same game up between shit man even the original diablo let you have what, what like 30 different abilities and magic spells i guess this five skill limitation in diablo 4 wouldn't bother me so much if it weren't so tedious to change build right if you get to a super high level in diablo 4 and decide to change your play style you better have enough gold to change it back in case you hate it because there is no loadout system which i think would work if you could purchase like loadout slots Oh yeah, I would, I would love that. And, and you could swap those out at the stash. I'd probably keep playing the game if that was a thing. But right now, it just feels like Diablo 4 is insistent on restricting the most fun aspects of its gameplay. Is it for balance? No. Balance for what? PvP? Who the fuck cares? While it's used like 500 different abilities, balance for PvE? That's a laugh. We just established the game is too easy up until you hit level 50. Maybe, maybe it's to force players to make trade-offs and that seems more likely, but come on, man. It's boring. The main cornerstone of D4 is play your way. Between all of our different systems, you can really create a custom character in ways that was not available in previous Diablo titles. You're a liar. You're a liar. In the eternal conflict between the high heavens and the burning hells, Diablo 4 offers you more choice than ever before. This too is false. Because no. we have all of these different ways to make your own character, there's a lot more possibility compared to previous titles of how you want to play, how you want to build your character. Liar! You see, I had this fan- I don't know, he's so dramatic. It's, it's not right. Fantasy of being a lightning-throwing, shape-shifting druid. I wanted to have a hybrid between those- Mathematically, Blizzard is correct. Theoretically, they're right as well. Practically, they're right as well. The guy is making the personal decision, personal opinion, sharing about the build and... Uh, yeah, he could be right, but on paper, he's not. That was two builds, but I had to settle for just the lightning. Why can't we have more hotkeys? Is it a technical limitation? Like, because they're making the game for consoles too? Mm -hmm. Well, that doesn't make sense because Dragon Age Origins, Fable, and other RPGs have had workarounds for that issue. But let's look at another top-down RPG that's also on console. Divinity Original Sin 2, one of the greatest video games ever made. You can invest points in the memory stat to unlock more skill slots. There's no limit, and you can do this with four different characters. It's literally like that easy. Or at least it would be if when you leveled up, you can invest points in attributes, but you can't do that in Diablo until level 50. What the fuck? Why, what were they thinking? Look, these are two radically different kinds of games, but the point is, as someone who's played a fuck ton 
of RPGs. I have a lot more fun with this than this. The limitations on skills and the backwards ass design of scaling difficulty have basically killed any long-term enjoyment I could have had with this game. You blew it! Diablo 4 is plagued by so many what the fuck were they thinking type of issues. It's almost <laughs> comical. What the fuck? You know how when PC players play a first person shooter and they lose their mind if they can't control the field of view? That's exactly how I felt playing Diablo 4. Like, bro, why is the camera so zoomed in? They got custom games in Warcraft 3 that let you zoom out further than what the base game lets you. Dude, zooming out is one of the biggest features they flaunted when they were promoting StarCraft Remastered. I just, I just don't get it. Look, I'll show you, okay? Here's the FOV in the original. Character ain't too big, looks great. Here's Diablo 2, same thing. Even Diablo 3 somehow got this right. And then, well, what the fuck? Throughout my play... <laughs> So that the world would look bigger. Through, I kept spamming the scroll button in vain, hoping it would zoom out, but it never does. Wait, hold the fucking phone. You can zoom out? I've been playing for 20 hours, and now when I'm in hell near the end of the goddamn game, it can finally zoom out? Why couldn't I play the rest of the game like this? Why does it only zoom out at parts where the developers want to show off the level design? The level design's beautiful, by the way. Why do I even have to complain about this? It just shouldn't be an issue. Just let me zoom out. I figure we might as well discuss the side content Diablo <laughs> offers. Well, most of it is pretty fun initially, like the dungeons, some side quests have interesting bits of story. Yeah, and the that's strongholds true. are fun, lengthy battles. But these activities get old real quick. It's pretty obvious they had a quantity over quality mentality yeah. to ensure there was a lot of content for players to grind and complete. So there's five main areas in the game and by completing the side content you earn renown which lets you unlock important things like extra skill points more potion capacity it's pretty much necessary to max these things out after you be by the way potions are such a big nonsense that you have so many potions it's better to have reuse like there was in diablo 3. in the campaign problem is once again, as a result of the live service, Blizzard intends to reset the renown you've earned with every season. Why is this a problem? Because most Diablo fans fucking hated grinding for it. I don't know why they are holding on to the idea that refarming renown will be fun. Uh, I don't <laughs> want to do the same side quests again. They're fucking annoying and they're a waste of time. I don't want to have to re-clear the same pointless dungeons for no reason. You've probably seen people say stuff like, if yeah. I don't want to have to grind Renown again. If I have to grind Renown again, I'm not playing anymore. And I'm sitting over here thinking to myself, so if the side content is that bad, if it's so boring that you never want to experience anything like it ever again, then that's not content, dude. Those are chores. You're at the grocery store right now, checking off a list. You know, maybe these activities are worth <laughs> re-examining and redesigning to make Grinding Renown a fun- They should make like a normal rewards. I, I agree with this. Side content is cheap. ...fun experience so that players are open to doing that again. In the promotional videos, Blizzard kept reiterating how much content there is and that players will never run out of things to do. It's been created to feel full of things to encounter, full of secrets to discover, full of characters to interact with, full of stories to find. You have so many activities that you might run into. Diablo 4 offers so much more for players to do than ever before. We've really crafted the world to feel like there's always something just around the corner to find. Every single time you come back to play Diablo 4, there's going to be new stuff for you to experience. There's over 120. Oh, I, I, I can tell I've been on a break, so that's right. After one week of completely r losing any sort of memory of uh, Diablo 4, when you're going to return to the game, yeah, everything's going to feel new for uh, for an hour. Dungeons to play through and find. We've got almost 150 dungeons in the game. There's going to never be an absence of something to do. It's really just going to be a way to keep coming back and experiencing more Diablo 4. It's usually a red flag when I hear developers talk like this, because what they're actually trying to say, if you translate it, is our game is going to have endless amounts of boring, tedious, and shallow activities. They focus on the scale of content instead of its quality. They prioritize... Hey, it look, looks beautiful. I, no way. The grind instead of the fun, the exciting, and the new. I don't know, man. I guess I just, I just don't get it. I don't understand the appeal of having my progress and my character reset every few months. 
and then having the devs try to pass it off as a feature and not a corrupt save file. You know, getting to level 40 and saving up enough money to buy a mount in WoW Classic was a big deal. I felt so accomplished after I did that and that I could explore the world much more efficiently. But more importantly, Blizzard didn't take my mount away after three months and say, go do all that shit again, asshole. What's next on the agenda? Uh, stats and loot. The bread and butter of most RPGs and okay. the main reason people play them for hundreds of hours. On some occasions, you do get a nice reward for completing a quest or defeating a boss like this amulet that summons a barrier or the mother's embrace ring you get from Lilith. But these are, are extremely rare in the campaign. Now, it might just be me, but I find the majority of loot drops in Diablo 4 to be terribly unexciting to the point mm -hmm. where I hardly read what most items actually do. And at a certain yeah. point, I just walk past chests because they rarely hold anything of interest i think the loot is extremely boring for a few reasons i, I want to come across as well say that he's right loot and aspect thing is that that drops is it's really boring you should be able to uh, if i could be in control i would lower the drops of leg legendary items by three times or four times so they would not drop as often and aspects that you can imprint on your own should not be dropping on items and only unique items that you cannot make yourself would be dropping yeah because uh, if you have too much drops same as with uh, with diablo 3 overall it's just looking for your best items and the rest of the items it's just you don't care about them so you don't treasure them like i like the thing when ha when such thing happened in the world of warcraft and as well as in diablo 2 if you have a unique item you may not fully know what this unique item is for and, and what kind of build will use this item but i better keep this item and save it for later so that when i know how how to deal with this item i'm gonna use it but in diablo 4 such thing doesn't exist yeah man it's I was really looking into this like the person gonna be sharing so much negative thoughts that I would be easily saying nope 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 that's nonsense but uh, he starts making sense and I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> Number one, it all looks extremely generic. Maybe it's because I'm playing as a druid and just the druid items are boring, but when I look at the loot in Diablo 1 and 2, it just looks way fucking cooler. You got like the skull shield or arcane's valor. I mean, yeah. look at the helmets and how colorful and different they are. But in Diablo 4, when I find a pair of boots, I feel like it's the same fucking pair of boots I've already seen a hundred times. Am I the only one who feels this way? Am, am I missing something? Am I tripping? You know, maybe it also has to do with the fact that every item takes up the same amount of space and the icons all look so similar that in my brain, it just, it all morphs together. There are very few yeah, moments where yeah, finding yeah. a piece of loot is genuinely exciting in Diablo 4. And part of that is because I'm also not a huge fan of RPGs that dump a bunch of meaningless numbers and stats into the menu and equipment. Remember how awesome it was in WoW when you got that first item that boosted your stats instead of just armor? Oh, dude, four strength, four stamina leather belt ah uh, level 18 uh, uh. i think part of the reason this clip became a meme is his excitement mirrored our excitement and that was for a belt that he found at level 18. i have never been even close to this excited for any item in diablo 4. when appraising the value of an item in an rpg it really helps to understand the game's mechanics and what certain stats actually improve if the mm -hmm. stats and numbers are too convoluted then players aren't going to understand or feel any tangible benefit from increasing them right again yeah. you look at items and wow it's like plus 17 stamina what does plus one stamina do plus 10 hp Okay, you can easily wrap your head around that. But because the sense of progression in Diablo true, 4 true, is so true. fucking skewed, now you find an item that's like plus nine to all stats. And you're like, what the fuck? That sounds awesome. I'm only level 20. And then you'll look at what one point of strength does. And what does it do? Gives you one point of armor. Okay, well, I have 3,000 points of armor, so this is this is worthless to me. I can't yeah. get over this. Like, strength doesn't improve your damage or nothing? What is... I personally, I, what I would do, I would reduce the numbers that you get when you have items and stats increases on everything like percentages could be the same but the flat values should be lowered it's like in diablo 2 i know that i'm tanky if i get if i have like 1500 armor or at least 700 armor something like that but here 
big numbers it's just a bigger number more wins for you and i don't know if you have like less damage or less no if you have less armor you can invest into agility or dodges or anything like that and you can compensate your armor with more damage but here when you have a multiple numbers everything scales to tens of thousands it's it's just the bigger number the better but if you could have a lower number it would be i agree with this guy uh it would be a lot easier to calculate and value yourself and understand the value of the item so that you could either use the item or consider it to be trash but now it's just all called huge confusion and where multiple stats only that increase a stat um strength stamina and uh, strength and intellect willpower all those stats only applies when you have paragon points and now the question exists why those items are dropping when you are leveling up even though you have no actual use for those items when you're below level 50. i don't know why i'm siding with this guy <laughs> What does strength typically do in an RPG? You want to use this big ass weapon? Strength requirement. You want to do more damage? Strength. Bro, even in Warcraft 3, the strength stat did more than what it does in Diablo 4. And that wasn't even an RPG. I've never played an RPG like this where the core stats felt so fucking useless, so meaningless to increase. This is apparently what the entire Paragon board is all about. Yeah, and let's talk about that shit. How do you balance a game that has skill trees this big by making each point basically worthless? Diablo 1 did it better. I just, I can't for the life of me understand what they were thinking. The reason I bring all this up is Man, because this so, so many of the stats on items just, I look at it and I'm like, well, this doesn't mean anything to me or it doesn't feel important. League of Legends champion design suggests that giving players fewer but more meaningful passives is far more desirable than a bunch of passives that offer minimal changes because you're not going to notice most of this shit at all, especially when the enemies are scaling with you. There's so many different damage modifiers, you know, complex number calculations like damage to close enemies, damage to distant enemies. Well, where's the Yeah, I had the very same problem. <sighs> It's a mess, I don't know. The stat for damage to enemies at a moderate distance. Why don't you have that as well? Why is it necessary to have like eight different stats to calculate how much damage something does? Why do resistances reduce incoming physical damage as well as magical damage? It's just like, I just think this is like the worst stat system I've ever seen in an RPG. It, it defies belief to me. So again, going back to the original, enemies didn't respawn and levels were finite. So you were encouraged to kill everything, pick up every item and sell the shit you weren't using. You could sometimes buy a really good item with gold and in the later stages, purchase elixirs to boost Whoa, stats. That looks cool. And of course, stock up on potions. But Diablo games, in my opinion, even the first two always had a way of making gold feel kind of worthless. That has never been more apparent than in Diablo 4. It's like you'd only have two options, buy the shittiest gear you'll never use for dirt cheap or drop all of your money on one overpowered item. I hate having just these two choices. So when you keep checking the shop inventory in Diablo 4 and it's never anything good or it's something that requires you to drop all your money so you can't respec, you just stop checking. This blows my mind. The entire concept of purchasing items and equipment in an RPG is superfluous. That's a big fucking problem. I never once in my entire playthrough purchased a piece of equipment from a store. Now, sure, I did things like upgrade my potions or craft elixirs or upgrade my gear, but I never bought anything. In fact, this, this item has more item power, but the ring I currently have equipped has higher higher resistances. So, like, what's <laughs> the, like, why the fuck would I ever buy this or that or that? Imagine creating an RPG where the in-game <laughs> currency feels worthless at one point i stopped trying to pick up gold oh, entirely man. if it was two seconds out of my way and again be it really explains why this video i went viral this video just gets stronger and stronger minute by minute okay because th the value of item scales and everything is progressively getting more and more expensive i feel like i'm only able to afford one or two items at any particular store so I'm not about to drop all my cash on something that I'm wow. just going to end up outscaling in an hour or two. I think you've royally fucked up the in-game currency when taking three seconds to double back and pick up a pile of gold feels like a waste of time. 
So many facets of this game feel superfluous to me, and I'm not saying they are superfluous, it's just how they feel to me. So in a nutshell, my play style eventually developed into, okay, I'm skipping chests because those are worthless. I run through all combat in the open world because it's unnecessary. If gold isn't in my path, I don't go back for it. I skip through sections of dungeons so I can complete them faster. I skip dialogue mm -hmm. and side quests so I can grind the renown faster. I don't go into the cellars anymore. And it's just like, dude, I'm just skipping the game. I'm just skipping past all this shit. This yeah, I've done that too. This is the game. Wow. All right, Diablo 4, you've got one last chance to redeem yourself. And that's with this story. Is it any good? Well, I'm pleased to say that the opening cutscene is pretty fucking awesome. It begins with some grave robbers who are in way over their heads. They stumble across a power, the likes of which they can't even comprehend. And the story is at the very end because it's the weakest link of this video, I believe. Immediately, the game establishes that sense of terror and fear that was sorely lacking in Diablo 3. Then your character arrives in a town, you clear a dungeon of demons out for them, you head back and start celebrating yeah, this with the town. Yeah, amazing. All of a sudden, oh shit, you're poisoned. This guy brings you to a shack where they perform some kind of satanic human sacrifice ritual, and it's like, okay, all right. You got me invested. So while there are some decent moments here and there, after the introduction, the story takes a fucking nosedive like Amelia Earhart. <laughs> the beginning and end of Diablo 4 are the game's strongest parts, narratively, likely because there are only two pre-rendered cutscenes that sandwich the rest of the story. Almost everything that happened in the middle is just a blur to me. Which is strange because the setup for the plot is very interesting. You've got Lilith and Anarius, an angel and a demon who created Sanctuary. This is the first time we've seen like an archangel and a demon form some kind of an alliance. They seem to be the only entities on each mm. faction with a desire to end the war between heaven and hell, or at least escape it. One of the major He's issues right. with the story is the parts that it's don't include right. Lilith, Mephisto, or Anarius are terribly mundane. Characters are swapping in and out, and, and they get killed off, you know, the scene after they're introduced. Some of them, I even forget their name, like this guy who was in the tree. Nefane, I totally forgot he existed until I went back and watched my own footage. I think Diablo 4's story is further proof to me that Blizzard's style of writing has deteriorated severely in the last decade. You know, if you compare the end of act cinematics in Diablo 2 to 4, I mean, it's, it's a major difference. Now, we are truly alone. The creators of Sanctuary, Angel and Demon. Father and mother are dead. I heard later that he was defeated. And that the Swordstone were destroyed in Hellforge. All except one. The big difference is in Diablo 2, they actually show the events that Marius, the narrator, is talking about as opposed to just like some boring static shots of like a horse walking through the snow. It's why I seen like this. Lilith and Astaroth had made a deal. And we were the ones who would pay the cost. Is nowhere near as interesting or engaging as this. Take it. Take it, take it. I'm glad this is finally over, Terry. Oh. Everything happened exactly as Lilith wanted. <laughs> We just danced to her music. That's fine. It's why I'm more interested in this. Oh, I failed, dear girl. I couldn't do as you asked. And not so much this. Donan was shattered. His mind on grief, not her. Not answers. Look what the stone has done to me. <laughs> Playing Diablo 4 is like dating a pretty woman. The kind that the longer you talk to her, the more you realize she has the personality of a tampon. Wide as an ocean, what the? deep as a puddle. Yes, there are hundreds of NPCs in several different towns, but the world design of Diablo 4 is a byproduct of the gameplay less so the story now what do i mean by that what are, what are those words that are coming out of your mouth Act yeah man? Well, let explain. me explain the open world isn't there to service some kind of overarching or branching narratives mm -hmm. it's to create a big ass map that the developers can litter with tons of activities 
to keep players busy and keep them grinding. You might have noticed that almost none of the optional dungeons in this game have any sort of story or history behind them. Yeah. But I find the most immersive game worlds are those that tell a story while I'm playing through them. Now, if you want to understand what's so wrong with Diablo 4's world, we need to look back at the first game because it's the polar Again. opposite of everything Diablo 4 is trying to be. I think Blizzard knows that Tristram is the most memorable location in the series because in every sequel, they find a reason to take you back there. Thing is, Blizzard doesn't seem to understand why Tristram is such an iconic and memorable location. Oh yeah, the music does some pretty heavy lifting, but mm -hmm. the main reason comes down to this phrase, less is more. Bigger isn't always better, just ask my gargantuan penis. Diablo 1 took place in a single location, Tristram, and there were eight characters that lived there, a couple cows, and a cathedral that led down to hell where the bad guys were. Each character offered a combination of advice, exposition, and insight for the player. Whenever you got a quest in Diablo 1, you could ask each of the eight residents about it. This added important context and massive buildup to each quest. I saw what Farnham calls the Butcher as it swathed a path through the bodies of my friends. Ah, oh, he swung a cleaver as large as an axe, hewing limbs and cutting down brave men where they stood. I know more than you think about that grizzly fiend. His little friends got a hold of me and managed to get my leg before Griswold pulled me out of that hole. I'll put it bluntly. Kill him before he kills you and adds your corpse to his collection. By the oh, light, uh, I know of this vile nice. demon. I don't know what he used to slice open his victims, but it could not have been of this world. Beware if you plan to battle this fiend. The Butcher is a sadistic creature that delights in the torture and pain of others. You have seen his handiwork in the drunkard Farnham. Big Cleaver killing all my friends. Couldn't stop him. Had to run away. So everyone in town is telling you this guy is a big fucking menace, but from their own unique perspective. This yeah. added realism to the yeah. world of Diablo and its characters. It created build up and tension to every mm -hmm. quest and every boss fight. There's a reason Blizzard keeps bringing back the Butcher in newer Diablo games, and it's because this quest from the first game is just that iconic. But why? The spirits of the dead are now avenged. Well, part of the reason is for every quest in Diablo 1, you get to consult the same eight characters. This makes the plot easy to follow as it's not being communicated through like 40 different characters. <laughs> Diablo 4 is like the exact opposite. It feels like once again, the designers had to justify this open world design by having you constantly jumping from one area to the next. No one person, quest, or area is given enough screen time to become truly memorable aside from a handful mm -hmm. of moments. Prime example of this style of writing is the Tree of Whispers. It's an ancient tree decorated with the severed heads of those who pursued its knowledge. And that sounds fucking awesome. Sounds awesome, but it's, 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 it's empty. Tree of knowledge that we need to use, Tree of Whispers. It's, I have no idea up till this moment why this place even exists why can't we have just like a button to press why we need to go to a certain zone to collect things or just get rewarded just doesn't make sense it looks like a daily chore but this place has barely any build-up to it at all you can't really ask characters to prod their knowledge of it Lorath and donan might have a couple lines but it's nothing deep so it makes this ultra cool area of the game feel far less important than Ultra cool and laggy, it is laggy, very heavy, heavy intensive on PC, I don't know, it's more than Kiyawashad, every time I enter the zone, my computer fan turns on, mm-hmm. And the world is trying to make it out to be. What it boils down to is, ironically, the original Diablo, which takes place in a single town consisting of eight characters, tells a vastly more interesting, relatable, and immersive story than all of the towns and people in Diablo 4 combined. Now, maybe that's just nostalgia squirting out my ass, but let me convey this point with a question. Can you name a single blacksmith in Diablo 4? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. That's what I thought. Remember Griswold? Whoa, what can I do for you? Of course you do. Now, run with me on this for a second. Instead of having one blacksmith who's like an actual character that you can talk to, 
who also repairs your shit and sells you stuff. We now have 75 soulless, empty blacksmiths scattered across the land of Sanctuary, none of whom play any role in the story or contribute at all to the world building. This True. doesn't apply to just the blacksmiths in the world of Diablo 4. It applies to all vendors in the game. They serve no purpose outside of gameplay, which I, I, I guess it's fine. Like it's lazy, but it's fine. But do you see the conundrum? Since Diablo 4 is an open world game, if you take out 70 blacksmiths and leave only five or whatever, then it becomes tedious to find them. And Blizzard clearly didn't want to go through the effort of writing each blacksmith to be an actual character, and I don't blame them for that. My point is that in so many ways, Blizzard seems to sacrifice world building for an open world. Now call me crazy, but I think vendors and merchants play an important role in a video game, especially if mm -hmm. that game is an RPG. Don't get yourself killed. Neither of us want to see you go hollow. Welcome to the Circus of Value! Got something that might interest you. <laughs> No, I think all NPCs should play some kind of role in an RPG or offer a slice of life. But outside yeah. the characters in the main story, most of the people who inhabit Sanctuary aren't memorable or important at all. And therefore, neither is Sanctuary itself. I don't know, man. The scaling difficulty and restrictive skill trees make the core gameplay feel extremely easy, boring, and repetitive. <laughs> and with some slight changes that wow. they'll probably never do, would improve the this video right before season one launch gonna blow so many people's minds blew my mind game vastly the loot is uninteresting most of the game's content is shit i just ended up skipping trying to get to the fun part but but i never really got to the fun part in the end for all of blizzard's efforts to make diablo 4 a massive open world game with tons of replayability content and depth it ends up being no deeper than the puddle in my backyard and that is why Diablo 4 is so bad. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did and subscribe to the Act Man for more awesome content. Just a reminder that you can enjoy things even if I say bad things about it and you can disagree with my opinions too. But don't let me rob your enjoyment or police your entertainment. All right. All right, everyone. That's all I got for today. This is the Act Man signing out. Peace. Man, this was a great video. There's a lot of points that I was able to resonate with. There's a lot of points that I didn't agree. Nevertheless, this was a great video. Thank you guys for watching and as well as I'm, I'm out.